All right, guys, so today we're going to do a video a little bit different than usual. Um, I want to talk about the console wars, and in particular, the game wars that coincided with them this year. Because this is one of the most interesting years we've had for gaming in a hot minute, man. It's been a while since we've had gaming be in such a, you know, explosive place, if that makes sense. So, the last month has seen the release of Halo Infinite, Battlefield 2042, COD Vanguard, and, oh my god, those guys suck. And, uh, and basically both the consoles are becoming more widely accessible. Even though they did come out last year, both the consoles are now basically kind of falling into normal people's hands instead of just scalpers and people trying to resell them. So the first thing that comes to mind uh, when I talk about Vanguard is it's a little underwhelming by comparison. Okay, so Battlefield 2042 is the loser this year. Battlefield 2042 is the clear-cut loser in terms of the game wars. It's called the game wars, okay? So, in the Game Wars of the three games that released, the big three FPS games currently on the market, Battlefield 2042 lost. Uh, the game is unfinished, it is uncomfortable to play, it's not extremely fun, uh, people don't really like it, and has, I think it's in the top 10 lowest scored games ever on Steam, which is pretty bad. Its Metacritic score is very low as well. Metacritic is a big deal, because it's voted on by users instead of being voted on by game, you know, critics and stuff like that, because if we're being honest, like, IGN slaps a 7 out of 10 on every single game ever. Like, even crappy games, just 7 out of 10. Even great games, 7 out of 10. It's just what they do. So, I never really trust gaming critics, uh, in most cases, but here I will say the fans got it right. Battlefield 2042 is not great. Meanwhile, you're looking at Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite is a really good game. At its core, Halo Infinite is functioning exactly like it needed to. Uh, it is, in my opinion, the saving grace of the franchise at the moment, because before this, uh, Halo was in a bad place, man. Halo 5 was really bad, and the six-year wait for Infinite felt even longer because of how bad the previous game was. You know, like, the, the servers on that game are basically dead unless you're in customs. It's just not fun to play. Infinite did come in, and I do think it saved it in many ways. The gameplay is much more akin to that of Halo 3 and Reach, which is exactly what we needed. It feels like a crossover between the newer style of Halo and the classic games that I will say more people do enjoy the classic style. So it's glad to see that return. And it does have its own problems. The microtransaction system and battle pass system are extremely predatory and bad, and they are being addressed. Uh, but 343 doesn't have a problem with its core gameplay. All, all of the issues are things that are lacking in the game, not things that are already there. Then you get to Vanguard. Vanguard has encountered quite a few issues, and I will say it's a byproduct of the way Activision has chosen to carry themselves recently. So Activision, if you guys didn't know, has had a lot of bad press lately. Um, personally, it is repulsive, some of the stuff that's gone on in that company. Um, their CEO should step down. Uh, there have been multiple calls for him to step down by employees. He hasn't yet, uh, but I think this game is a byproduct of what Activision's been doing. So first of all, you're dealing with a PR nightmare, uh, which will affect the development of a game. They've been dealing with it for about a year now. Uh, it, I, I believe it first broke uh, halfway through Cold War, and then it's just recently spiked again with another major revelation in it. So it's a big problem. I'm not going to touch on it too much uh, because it's not really a subject matter I like to discuss. Um, you know, I, I like to keep my channel more uplifting, and I don't want to talk about like some really messed up, <laughs> messed up stuff. But it's, it's not a good workplace environment. So, this game seems to be a byproduct of the fact that Modern Warfare did really well. And Activision likes to hop on trends, and when one game does well, they do it again, and again, and again, until it doesn't do well, and then they stop doing it. Uh, and that is definitely what happened here. This game feels like a reskin of Modern Warfare, and Modern Warfare is a good game. But again, this feels like the same thing with a World War II flair. You know, it's not... I, I, I shouldn't have to pay $60 for that, you know, that should be like a an update. Like, it's... It's really strange. The core gameplay of this game is a lot of fun, and I do like some of the changes they made to Gunsmith. Having 10 attachments is great. Uh, the weapon balancing isn't horrible. It was pretty bad at first, but it doesn't feel as bad now that everyone kind of has their guns leveled up. Uh, there's 20 maps on release, which is amazing. So this game does have some really great things to offer. Call of Duty hasn't had 20 maps on release in a long, long time. Usually we get like single digit numbers, uh, at least in recent years, if you exclude gunfight. So. Definitely a big step up there. The biggest problem is that it feels soulless. You know, when, when a game feels like it has no soul and like it's just a copy and pasted version, it doesn't land with people. And so I'm, I'm just telling you all of this to paint the picture going into this game. Because it's a good Call of Duty game. This is a good Call of Duty game. But it doesn't stand out at all, right? Like if you were to compare this to every other COD game, this would just be Vanguard, right? Like this wouldn't be like a big deal. I, I would argue that Ghosts has more of an identity 
than this game. I don't like Ghosts. I personally think it's probably the worst COD game. But it has an identity. It has something that differentiates itself. This game is like copy and pasted from the previous one. So why would I buy it? And I think that's the question a lot of people are asking, which is why the sales for this game are extremely low. Call of Duty is seeing lower and lower sales progressively each year. And then they hit a peak with one game that hits the market. You know, like for example, Modern Warfare. Call of Duty was seeing lower and lower sales. Black Ops 4 did not perform well. And then Modern Warfare comes out and boom, boom, breaking records for the series. It's a big deal. I, I just wonder, personally, this is, this is my thought. If it's time that Call of Duty stops doing yearly releases, and I don't know, this is blasphemy. As someone who snipes on Call of Duty, right, and, and plays Call of Duty very consistently, I think it's time Call of Duty takes a break. They've been doing yearly releases since, I believe, 2003. That's crazy. Do you know how many video games you've released in that time? And they've revolutionized video games in many ways. COD 4 changed the gaming landscape permanently. Permanently. You know, even even their advanced movement games were extremely important. I know they were just copying trends that other games were doing, but they did do it a different way. They made it mainstream. Call of Duty makes things mainstream. But at a certain point as a development team, you know, like Halo Infinite took six years, six years for them to get this game right. And it launched with very little content. It's a great game, don't get me wrong, but it is missing classic modes. It is missing Forge. It's missing Infection, right? Like it's missing important parts of the game. Because it's hard to make a video game in 2021. It is harder to make a video game now than it was in 2003. In 2003, you didn't have to meet the graphical standards of all these consoles. And the, the file sizes weren't as big. It was a different time. You could make a game every year and just pump them out. You can't do that anymore. Which is why these games feel copy and pasted year after year after year. Basically, more of the story is, is Vanguard came in second. It came in second out of the three. Uh, but it's not a good second. It's a bad second. It's it's a lifeless second place. It feels like one of the crappy Marvel movies. You know, like there's there's the good Marvel movies that definitely have a unique idea and they want to tell you a unique story. And then there's the Marvel movies that feel like a formula. And this game feels like a formula. We gotta change it, man. Going forward, I really hope that they either take a break or they just give us something new. They stop making every game on the same engine and stop making every game feel the exact same with the same type of weapon balance. I mean, look, STG is the M4, MP40 is the MP5, and Car 98, we've had the same gun in Call of Duty for three years. The Car 98 has been in the last three COD games. Why? Why? Give us some new guns. Let us use something fun, man. Like, damn. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, drop a like, subscribe, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.